Uh, all the claim you claim, even the title of most reverend, is for a purpose, for a time. It is the real person that matters, that will matter. It's all the worldly arrangements. Ah, in the grace of God, I pray I will make heaven. Amen. And all of us here. Yeah. Nobody will consider title there. It's for the arrangement of orderliness here. Yeah, that's all. Some of you are even at peace more than us. You're at peace. I won't be surprised if I see some of you in front. So it's for what they are in All this carrying our titles, our position. That's when any senior comes to the cathedral. Take a seat. Take a seat. And I've had occasions to tell some of us who are annoyed that, but why should you leave the throne for them? They say, look, this is going, will he carry it away? He will carry it. He will leave the thing for me. This, the way we look at things of the world, we must go back to scripture. I'm not claiming to be perfect, but we must control ourselves or let the Holy Spirit control us and our desires. You want to process, and you know I'm senior, and you push me to the front. If service will end, if I need to process, I will go to my house, my wife come and stay in my front. <laughs> I mean, it's simple. Let's see. It's not as uh, difficult as this thing. So here we are all seated together. And there are no difference. We go to the dining, we eat the same food. Let's take life easy. Let's take life easy. Okay, I said I will close with four points. The Lord taught us your life is not held together by all the stuff you have. Most importantly, life is not to be valued or measured in terms of wealth, possession, possession and possession and titles. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world? and yet lose or forfeit their very self. Listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10. Do you not know that wrong words will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, or adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. God, amongst many things, God wants us to be growth oriented and hard working people. What do we do with our time? The time that is so available to us that lead us into doing the negative things can be used to read books, can be used to do research, can be used to do visitation, can be used to pray, can be used to several great things. Let me go to conclusion. One of the things we need to thank God for is the wealthy ones in our churches. As I was talking this point down and I got to this point, using your wealth to serve God. We thank God. The little I know of our dad, we have so many that you people can run to, we can run to say, help us, help us. And the help will come, even if it is not as much as we expected. Use your word to serve God. 
Honor the Lord with your wealth, says Proverbs 3, 9. With the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Let wealth be a tool in ministry rather than object of worship and security. Also, be generous with your wealth to God and God's work. We've had examples of people of old in scriptures who have been generous. Joseph of Armatas, Zacchaeus, Nicodemus, the woman with the jar of perfume, Alabasta. Give us don't lack. It is only by giving that you can protect your barn and make it bigger. Charities, missions, projects, they need attention of our pockets and of our process. So, in spite of all of this, we are called to have one, attitude of gratitude on what you have, not what you don't have. And that attitude of gratitude is seen in our tithe. We must realize that material blessings will not bring peace in this life or joy in the eternities. So even as ministers, let us develop a heart of charity. Let us be willing to give and to share. Givers do not lack. There is this prayer in Proverbs and we should close with chapter 30 verse 7 to 9. I want to say that these prayers, many Pentecostal preachers, they like to denounce it. Let's take a second look at this prayer. It goes thus, O oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor and may steal and thus insult God's holy name and be arrested too, add that. We need that prayer. May the Lord help us. May the Lord grant us grace and the heart to be humble, to receive and to accept. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Questions and comments? Each of the papers we have uh, presented is on each advocate's uh, platform so that you can uh, get it out for everybody. Now, Haruna, good afternoon. Thank you. What a question. I would have protested. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll, we'll Praise, the Lord. That. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Baba, I want to thank you so much for this. <laughs> I'm asking a question. Okay. Uh, the lecture has touched me in many places. And uh, I feel like the Almighty Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the issue that came up in our church times back, we're talking about greed. Is it like for a Christian when uh, something is cheap? Maybe uh, they are selling rice now, it has come down maybe to 50,000. And uh, with the hope that it's going to increase in December. So you buy like 1,000 bags of rice. 
and then when it is time, when the food is expensive, you sell and then lift your head. This is a good attitude for a Christian to have. It came up, it came up, and one of our Bible studies, and uh, because uh, I'm in a business environment, it became a heated uh, argument. And I said, okay, when I have the opportunity, Thank you. Um, two things. Number one, go to the story in Exodus. The story of Joseph. You get half answer there. On the, on the second flip of the coin, if you are buying it for not to sell, it is something, it is an arrangement. Like what Joseph did. But if you are buying to keep and to now escalate the price, I don't think that is morally correct. I don't think so. Please talk if you think. Uh, I don't think it's morally right. Because uh, is it only thing? Sir, I think that 
what is important in this particular thing, like the rice, let's say for example, rice, or maybe perishable things. You can buy it and, for example, like, let me say tomato now. I was able to buy and store it and keep it instead of, I mean, it's uh, spoiling. It's plenty, everybody's buying. So when I bought, I bought more than enough. But everybody in the site also have access when I was buying. It's not that I'm hoarding. Okay. If I didn't buy, maybe those tomatoes would have been wasted. Like for example, for mangoes. Look at how many mangoes get wasted. But people now are now processing it now. And that reason we don't see much of them being wasted in town. Then they will not save later. So this is business. But the only thing that is there is when we are fixing price, we should fix price like a Christian. That's the underlying thing. Thank you, sir. Next. <laughs> Your grace, sir. Yes, sir. I want to see the two sides in the reference in the road. That's about Joseph. At the beginning, yes, he's taught and he's sold. But at the latter end, he was exchanging the commodity with their life, with their future. That place your life that you will serve the king. And then you will serve. Yes. That's the extreme. Right? Next. Next. <laughs> no, next. We'll settle it tomorrow. <laughs> the provost to appreciate Baba. I tried as much as possible to destroy Baba, thinking that uh, it's too late for him to come and stand again, but thank God for his strength. Baba, God continue to renew your strength in Jesus' name. We appreciate you for that to have deposited again in us. We pray we need to put this to practice. So that at the end of it all, all of us will end up with the starting in Jesus' name. We are very grateful. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We give all the glory to God for the grace and the strength He has endowed us with since the beginning of today, except especially on a waiting day like this. We thank God for the strength given to every one of us. And for those who probably have broken their fast behind the scene, no problem. Uh, we are grateful to God for His grace upon our lives. So after now, we shall go to our different uh, locations to refresh and break our fast. But let me give this... Uh, notices. Tomorrow again uh, we shall start at 7.30 a.m. with the morning devotion. So let us take cognizance of this. Uh, we have just finished talking business. Uh, the business that I want to talk about now is to help you you know how much they are selling bread now. 1,000, 1,200, in some places, more than that. And you know that our church is uh, baking bread. You know that our church is baking bread. Which, which our church? Very, very well, very well. So, our church have decided to bring bread at reduced price. So if you are interested, bread will come tomorrow. So instead of buying for 1,000, we'll buy for 900. Yes, I, 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 have, the, I have the permission of the baker to say that. That uh, if you have to buy for 1,000, we'll give you for 900. Instead of buying for 1,000, we'll give you for 1,001. Uh, we will reduce price. 
subsidies, right? Subsidy, subsidize uh, bread. So with this one, we are not holding it. We are not holding it. And effort Kabale, it will be as uh, the Lord has said. God bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, I've been asked to inform us by uh, Rusid, uh, that was his uh, non-governmental organization, that uh, a program will start on Sunday uh, on Premier FM, Radio Nigeria, Premier FM, at 3 p.m. every Sunday. Uh, so let's turn to you to listen to uh, Dawsisa, the most reverend Dr. Jeho Akefewa on that program. God bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Uh, I mentioned in the, was it in the morning of yesterday, that uh, on Monday, a uh, sum of uh, money was found. Uh, I'm yet to see the owner. By tomorrow, uh, we drop it in the offering bag if nobody shows up to leave clean. God bless you. Uh, again, I'd like to remind you that if you are shy to ask questions openly and you want to put it on paper, do so and give to me. God bless you. Let me invite the provost to close today's meeting. Just before the prayer, I, I want to appreciate Papa on behalf of all of us. We have received a letter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And she is a mother. And she is a mother. She is a mother. She is a mother. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this third day of the program. You said in your words some few things will not leave us except by fasting and prayer. And those who wait on you will renew their strength. So, Father, thank you for renewing our strength in this place today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And all that we have declared to your hearing, you told the children of Israel in Numbers 1428, that as we are sent to my hearing, so will I do. And so as we are praying to you during our prayer meetings today, do unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, your word, and you can even do more than we think or ask. More than even we ask, the Lord, do unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. And as we depart from here, first to go and break our fast, Baba, we ask that you sacrifice what we are going to take in the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of it, or when we depart to our different homes, take us home safely in Jesus' name. Tonight, renew our strength and grant us some sleep in the name of Jesus Christ. So that when we report here again tomorrow, we'll be refreshed in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Father. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good night and God bless you.